Within the study of human behavior, there is an area called cognitive bias. And these cognitive biases are something that we all deal with. Cognitive biases can be defined as a set of predictable mental errors that arise from our limited ability to process information objectively. It can result in illogical and irrational decisions, and it can cause you to misjudge risks and threats. There are a range of biases, for instance, confirmation bias. Confirmation bias happens when you look for information that supports your existing beliefs and reject data that goes against what you believe. This can lead you to make biased decisions because you don't factor in all of the relevant information. Another bias is the gambler's fallacy. With the gambler's fallacy, you expect past events to influence the future. Often, the longer the run, the stronger your belief can be that things will change the next time. But in fact, outcomes are highly uncertain. The number of successes that you've had previously has little or no bearing on the future. Now there is one bias which I have seen that all people tend to struggle with until a shock in life happens to them. And that bias is the continuity bias. And this bias is based on the idea that things will always remain the same. Things will remain the same as they are now. I will always be healthy. I will always have an income. I will always be alive. I have lived 30 years, therefore I'm gonna live another 30 years. That is the continuity bias. Things will continue to be the same. Now there are three lies, three distinct lies that the devil wants you to believe that is based on the continuity bias. Lie number one, I don't need God or there is no God. Lie number two, I acknowledge there is a God, but I have time until I meet him. And lie number three, I am in control of my life. Lie number one, I don't need a God or there is no God. This lie is rooted in the idea that I have gone this far in my life with seemingly no consequences. I have lived how I want to live. I have made decisions that please me and seemingly there has been no consequences. Is there even a God? To that question, I have one question for you. How did you get here? Everything about you and this universe screams that there is a designer. Everything about the human body and the universe at large screams to the fact there is an intelligent designer. You know there is a God. You know. Look at the world. Look at the size of the world. Look at the size of the universe. Think about yourself. How can you feel? How can you comprehend and understand? You are not an accident. There is a real God. A real God that you will meet one day a real God that will judge you. Lie number two, I acknowledge there is a God, but I have time until I meet him. I have heard people say that I'm gonna enjoy my 20s and 30s, and then when I'm 60 or 70, I will get serious with God. Are you sure about that? Tomorrow is not promised. This is the lie that the devil wants people to believe, that I have time. The thing you need to remember is young people die and old people do too. Healthy people die and sick people die too. Tomorrow is not promised for anyone. Now is the time to get your life right with the Lord. This is the continuity bias I was referring to at the start of this sermon. When people make decisions, people tend to think things will continue on as they did. I have lived 40 years on this earth. I'm guaranteed another 20 years. I mean, after all, the average life expectancy in the United States is 77. That is a cognitive bias. Things can change suddenly, without a moment's notice. And the worst thing about continuity bias is that it puts normal people, like you and me, normal people into a strange sense of security. A strange sense of security that I have lived this long and I haven't met the Lord yet. I am still relatively young and fit and able. I have time. We are all one step away from eternity. And if we truly understood this as humans, we would live our lives differently. We as humans are fragile, fragile human beings. So very fragile. James chapter four, verse 14. Whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. 
James asked us to consider the fragility of human life and the fact we live and move only at the permission of God. And some of you listening to me right now need to remember James chapter 4, verse 14, because you forget our dependency on God. You forget that in God you live and move and have your being. You forget that you couldn't draw your next breath without God. You forget that your strength is in Him. You forget that all good things that you have in your life is because of God. You forget that one day you will meet God. I have grown to hear people saying, I will serve God better when I grow older. I will do this and I will do that. This is the deceit the devil has always planted in people's hearts to draw them back from the things of God. This life is so unexpected. Your plans will not always go to plan. There is a story of the rich fool who made plans for his life. He made plans for his old age. He made plans for his retirement. He made plans for his 401k retirement. But God ripped those plans of his in two. Listen to me, God does not operate on our plan and our schedule. We operate on his timetable and his time. Lie number three, I am in control of my life. The older I get, the more I realize that we as humans are not in control. Each day is by the grace of God. Each day is by the mercies of God. Each day is because of the goodness of God. All we can do as humans is present our lives in the hands of the Lord and live according to His will. I am not saying we should not plan for the future. We should. What I am saying is we need to have God at the center of our plans, and we need to humble ourselves to know that we are not in control. God is. God is in control, not us. Luke chapter 12, verses 16 through 21. And he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich toward God. Notice how the rich fool said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. There I will store up my surplus grain. The rich fool had a wealth of resources. The man in the parable had his life confidently planned. He had his 401k in place. He had his health insurance in place. He had his dividends paying stocks in place. He had his investments all in line. He had his life all managed out and he was ready to live life with all his wealth. But God said to him, you fool, this very night that your life will be demanded from you. In one night, all the man's accomplishments and plans were ruined. He made business plans and life plans but could not control the day of his death. And all his accomplishments and plans were instantly nothing. This is lie number three that I want you to know. Ultimately, God is in control. There is nothing wrong with planning, but when you plan and fail to include God at the heart of your plans, you are being a fool. The man was a fool, not because he was rich, but because he lived without any awareness of and preparation for eternity. The man was a fool, not because he was rich, but because he lived without any awareness that he will meet God one day. This is how a lot of people live their lives as if they have all the time in the world. This story is an example of a man that believed in the lie of the devil that he had time. But without any prior warning, God said, you fool, this very night, your life will be demanded from you. No warning, no prior notice. So I have one question. Are you being a fool? Lie number three is, I will change when I am older. Life doesn't work according to your plan. And the older you get, and the more you push God to the side, 
The more are you putting God on the back seat so you can indulge in sin, so you can enjoy the pleasures of sin? Are you putting God on the back seat in order to chase money? God describes you as a fool.